Good day, subscribers. Thank you so much for joining me today. I am Jeremy. This is the Financial Education Channel, and today we're talking about the three pillars of money. There are only three pillars of money. Anything out there, money related in this world, can fall under one of these three pillars. They are investing, income, and debt, and they make up the entire structure of anything money related. So we're talking about how you can gain the system, what are the best ways to go about doing this, what is the thought process you want to have going into each of these, because if you have the right thought process, there's a book called Think, Think uh, Rich, Grow Rich, right? In that book, it talks a lot about the thought process. If you can get your thought process right right off the bat, you're, you've accomplished half of, the, half of the battle, then it's just about going out there and executing these things at the end of the day, but once you have your thought process properly uh, done, then you can go on and achieve big things. So so we're going to talk about each of these individually, the three pillars of money, okay? Hit a thumbs up if you enjoy this, by the way. So the first one has to do with investing. When you're ever you're going to make an investment in something, whether I don't care if it's a particular stock, I don't care if it's a stock option, I don't care if it's real estate, anything investing related, right? You need to ask yourself the three hows. There are three hows. The first one is how much? How much? How much can you gain from this, okay? How much money can you gain from this? How much as a percent can your money go up from this? Realistically, how much can you gain from that? So that's the first how. The next how is how long? So how long are you in a particular investment for? How long is this gonna take? Are you gonna need to be in this you know, for 20 years and then you can get your gain on that? How long is this process gonna take? I mean, there's a lot of great investments out there that take forever and ever for you to get your gains, you know, 10, 20, 30 years. I mean, you could buy treasury bills or something from the government, right? Cool, but that's gonna take like a forever for you to get your money back on that. I mean, I think they give out them out at 3% or something like that, guys. And the last one you gotta ask yourself is how safe. So how safe is a particular investment? How safe, okay? How safe, how much, how long, how safe? Anytime you make an investment, you've gotta ask yourself those three hows. How much is your potential gain? How long is this gain gonna potentially take and how safe is it? And that covers investing. Once you have those, you can kind of conquer that from there because you can look into stock market investing, real estate investing, conquer it from there. But you've gotta always have those three hows in mind whenever you go to make an investment. Income, okay, income. How should you approach income? Income's all about bubbles. It needs to become a bubble game for you. Whenever you think about your income, think of it for now on as a bubble game. This is a bubble game, okay? So the first thing is you wanna make sure your, your main bubble is your biggest bubble, okay? Your main bubble needs to be, I would say everybody should try, and of course I got viewers from all over the world, so it's different in different countries and whatnot, but if you live in America, you live in most of the developed countries and whatnot, you should aim at 5K as your main bubble, okay? Five, that means you're making $5,000 per month, and that's before tax, um, from your main bubble, okay? Then from there, it's about expanding bubbles. How do you get another bubble there? How do you get another bubble? And making more and more bubbles. It needs to become a bubble game. You guys, I've been, I've been preaching this for a while, and I wanna keep preaching it. I wanna beat this into everybody's head going into 2018. Income bubbles game, bubbles game. You've got to treat it like that. It's not just good enough to be a uh, one bubble, unless unless you're someone that gets satisfied very easily. But also remember, even if you're a person that gets satisfied very easily, that bubble, as soon as that bubble's gone, you got no bubbles left. Okay, you got no income, and you stuck yourself in a bad situation. I get a lot of times some people say, "Well, I make a lot of money from my one bubble." Cool, awesome. What happens when that one bubble goes away? Then what do you do? You gotta try to find another one bubble and that's just a bad situation, guys. The more income sources you have, the safer you're gonna be and ultimately the more money you're gonna end up making in the end. So it's a bubbles game, guys. That's how you need to focus around income. Now as far as debt, how do you need to think about debt? This is, uh, you can, debt can be a huge advantage. People only think like, and I only talk about the bad part of debt a lot of times on my channel, right? And that's kind of what you hear, the bad part of debt. But there's also some good things in debt, okay? So, what you need to think about debt is you need to use it as acquiring income producing assets, okay? Acquire income producing assets. That's something you want to do with debt if you have that ability to do that with debt. For instance, let's say 
you want to buy a, a rental home, right? You want to buy this rental home and you take out a loan on that and your mortgage is a thousand bucks a month, but you can rent that house for 1500 bucks a month. You just made yourself a very good decision unless the whole market tanks and all those kinds of things happen. Um, but you generally speaking made a very good decision on your part because you're going to be able to clear 500 bucks a month. And of course, some of that's a little bit of that's going to go to taxes and a little bit of that's going to go to fixing up the place once somebody moves out and kind of things like that. But ultimately you acquired an income producing asset. Okay. It's going to make you money. Another example would be, let's say you, you want to buy a small business. This business produces uh, $10,000 a month in, in income, right? In, in profits, right? And let's say your loan on that, you take out a loan for that and you only have to pay $5,000 a month toward the loan you took out on that. You took out a business loan to buy this other business. You're just netting yourself an extra $5,000 per month. That's a great decision. That's an income producing asset you bought. That's what you really want to use debt for, okay? You don't want to use it to just buy a bunch of stuff. And we'll get to that in just a second. You want to use it to buy things that are going to make you even more money. That's the beauty with debt. And also, if you are buying stuff with debt, which there's nothing wrong with that, there's nothing inherently wrong about that. Rich people use uh, you know, debt to buy all kinds of stuff, okay? Whether it's fancy cars, fancy houses, a fancy watch, whatever it be, well, that's fine. But if you do, make sure you're buying that stuff at under a 5% interest rate. If you're buying over a 5% interest rate and that's a want, not a need you're buying, I just think that's a huge mistake out there, guys. You've got to get that interest rate under 5%. If you're going to buy something that's a want and you're paying more than a 5% interest rate, that's just, that's just ludicrous in my opinion, especially if you get over the 10% gain, or excuse me, 10% interest rate, then you, you run the numbers on that, how much that want is costing you, and it gets absolutely absurd, guys. So if you're getting wants, wants, I want this you know, car that's way nicer than what I need, I want this house that's way nicer than I need, make sure you're getting that under a 5% interest rate, and make sure it's a fixed interest rate that it's under 5%, because you do not want to be buying wants at a 7, 10, 20% interest rate, guys. Guys, that's just ludicrous in my opinion. But income, uh, uh, acquire income producing assets. That's what you want to do for debt. So I hope this guys uh, this helped you guys tremendously today. It's a how game in investing. It's a bubble game in income. And it's a how do you acquire income producing assets in the debt category, guys. So I hope you really enjoyed this. Hit a thumbs up if you did. Thank you for watching, guys. And have a great day.